Hello everyone, Charles Watts here. Welcome back to Inside Arsenal. It's Sunday. I hope your weekend is going well, wherever you're watching or listening to this around the world. One week today, seven days, Manchester City versus Arsenal. From tomorrow, probably actually from Tuesday, maybe when the final international games are done and dusted, all attention turns to that game. I can't believe it's just a week away now. How exciting, stroke, nerve-wracking is the next seven days going to be? We're not going to talk about that game today. We will mention it in passing because there is quite a big injury update to talk about, which could have an impact on that game, of course. But as the week progresses, certainly from sort of tomorrow onwards, and it's got to be all start to be all about that game. We'll start, you know, doing some shows on who should be starting that game. Some of the big decisions facing Mikel Arteta is going to have some big ones to make when it comes to naming his starting eleven for that game at the Etihad. But lots to, to talk about from uh, what's gone on in the last 24 hours, all with the international football. Really good day for Kai Havertz. Uh, what a fantastic run of form he is having. So we'll talk about him and round up everything else that's going on. Lots of questions and comments from you guys as well to get stuck into on this Sunday. So let's start with... Uh, Kai Havertz, shall we? I think he deserves some flowers here, Kai. Now, this is a player who, uh, I mean, how do you put it? Certainly divided opinion when he came. I think that's probably fair. <laughs> I think that's definitely fair how to describe it. Certainly divided divided opinion. The start he had was very unconvincing at Arsenal. Plenty of people, including myself, were really questioning whether we were going to see Kai Havertz get to any sort of form that suggested he was value for money or deserving of a spot in the team. I was just really struggling in those first couple of months to see signs of it clicking and working. But I have been proven massively wrong. And I'm so delighted to be able to say once again, I've been proved wrong because it happens a lot. Um, and lots of people have been proven wrong. I think he deserves so much credit for the way he has been able to sort of shut out those negative voices that he would have heard that definitely would have been filtering for him, no matter how much he was trying to probably be protected by the club and trying to sort of filter out the noise. He managed to actually do that and continue on the path that he's on, continue to believe himself, continue to learn from Mikel Arteta and the coaching staff. And now we're seeing why Mikel Arteta wanted him. And he's doing it for Arsenal. He's doing it for Germany. You know, scoring again yesterday. What a win that was for Germany, by the way. Going to France and winning 2-0. Unbelievable start. Florian Wurz, what a goal after seven seconds in that game. Have a score in the second in the second half to make it 2-0 and win it for Germany. Uh, fabulous performance for them by all accounts. Absolutely deserved. Bit of a blow for France ahead of the Euros, but massive boost to Germany who have been, um, I don't know, going under the radar, I'd say, ahead of their home Euros. This summer, it looks like Kai might well be leading the line for them. He played in that number nine role yesterday for them. Obviously got the second goal. And like I said, he just deserves so much credit for the way he's turned things around. And um, you've got to be so mentally strong, I think, to be able to do what Kai Havertz has done. And no, I'm not saying he's he's there and he's a finished product and there's nothing more for him to do because there is. You know, I'm not, I still don't necessarily think he's first choice in the Arsenal side when everyone's fit. But what he's providing and what he's showing and the improvements that he's making, I just think, are it, it just shows the character of a guy who's got a really strong head on his shoulders, who can shut out the noise, who can continue to learn and who believes in himself. And uh, I'm delighted, as I said, to be proven wrong. And um, all, all you need to sort of look at is how he's held by the group at Arsenal, by the squad, by the coaching staff, and what sort of regard he's held. And they all speak so highly of him. They all really, really appreciate what he does, even in those difficult times when everyone was questioning him, when the fans, certainly a lot of fans were on his back. You know, the, the squad supported him and they wanted him to do well and they wanted him to show what he's about. And he's doing that now. And um, yeah, I'm delighted for him. I'm delighted for uh, I'm delighted for Arsenal, really, as well, because you wanted you wanted that sort of money to be invested in a player that was going to work, that was going to give stuff to the squad. And he is, you know, you, we can still question whether it's worth 65 million and all that. But at the end of the day, no matter how much money you spend on a player, you just want him to contribute. And he is contributing and he's showing signs that he's going to continue to contribute. And I think, yeah, deserves an awful lot of credit. So very happy for Guy Havertz. Fantastic night for him. Not such a great night for William Saliba, who sat on the bench, didn't even get on yesterday. And I know he hasn't had his best performances when he's put on a France shirt. Um, or certainly, you know, I haven't watched all the French games that he's played in, but I've heard that he hasn't had the best of performances and he hasn't looked that convincing and he hasn't looked like the player that we see at Arsenal week in, week out. But when that 
happens, you've got to surely point the finger towards the manager and wonder how we, how are you not getting the best out of this player that we all see week in, week out as one of the best centre-backs in the Premier League and Europe. And for him to be sat on the bench, didn't even get on yesterday. I just don't get it. I can't get my head around it. It's hard to question Deschamps. He's achieved everything you want to achieve in a game. So you know, who, who am I to sit here and really sort of question Didier Deschamps? But I look at I look at Saliba being an unused substitute and I just think, how are you not getting him in the team? How are you not getting the best out of William Saliba? He's too good to be sat on the bench. Ultimately, it doesn't matter to me. It's France. You know, I don't care really if France win or lose. I want England to win. They didn't, unfortunately, last night, but I want England to win. That's where my allegiance lies. It's where it will always lie. But you want to see Arsenal players do well on the international stage. And when you've got a player as generational, as good as William Saliba, to not be able to find a spot for him in your national team and to not work out how to get the best out of him, it just really does confuse me. And I, I think if I was French, if I, I, I'd just be demanding more from Deschamps to get the best out of William Saliba and to to utilise him better and to get him in the team. It just doesn't make any sense to me. And um, yeah, He's just such a good player, but... Not a good night for him. Kai Havertz certainly enjoyed the better of the two Arsenal players meeting yesterday in that game in Lyon. Elsewhere, Declan Rice played for England as they lost to Brazil. Disappointing one. That not a great performance by England. Bit of a bore fest, it has to be said. Not the ideal preparation ahead of the Euros. Look, there was loads of players missing, obviously. I just think these international breaks, this one especially, at such a crucial time of the season when there's so much to play for. Players pull out left, right and centre, as we've seen. It just feels like this is an international break you could do without. Obviously, you have the important games, so the playoffs and that sort of thing, which actually means something. But the friendlies, it just feels like a bit of a waste of time to me. I'm sure the managers will say different. They'll be like, this is our last time to really get the group together and prepare, or one of the last times to get the group together and prepare ahead of the summer, ahead of the tournament. But you just don't get the best of international football in this international break because it's just so much on the line for those players when they go back to their clubs. Um, and yeah, I kind of when I was watching bits and pieces of the England game, I didn't watch it all last night, but watching bits and pieces of it, it was just everything. It just felt so flat. You know, England versus Brazil, it's supposed to be such a, it's a glamour tie, isn't it? It's got so much history to it. And you're watching it yesterday and listening to the crowd at Wembley. It was just so flat. It just, yeah, it felt a shame. And obviously Brazil got the win. Endrick, what a young talent he looks to be on his way to Real Madrid, obviously scoring the winner for them. But Declan Rice played. He played very well. Gareth Southgate uh, was sort of full of praise for him yesterday after the game, despite the defeat. He said, we don't know. Um, oh, no, that's a different. I didn't actually take Gareth Southgate's quote down on that. Uh, but he was full of praise for him after the game, talking about how Declan Rice kind of showed with his performance yesterday, how much he's improved over the last year. Um but looking at that, you do watching that game, you felt oh, Declan Rice needs a partner next to him. You need someone to help him out because at the moment, Declan Rice, it feels like he's doing absolutely everything on his own um, for uh, for England. And it's not what you want. And it's not going to get the best out of him at all. Uh, but Trossard played as well for Belgium. Only played 45 minutes in a nil nil draw for Belgium over in Ireland. So fingers crossed at the moment. Everyone seems to have come through the international fixtures so far. Um, I'm hoping that Declan Rice, I think he played the full 90 minutes yesterday. Southgate made a lot of changes in that game, but Rice played the full game, which I'm hoping means he doesn't play on Tuesday in the game. Uh, coming out against Belgium, actually, I think, isn't it? Um, hopefully he gets the night off or he certainly gets, to, he only gets maybe 20 minutes off the substitutes bench, something like that. Because I hope he doesn't have to get another 90 minutes in midweek. Uh, but yeah, Trossard got 45 minutes, so hopefully he'll be fine uh, coming back. No injuries, which is the big thing at the moment for Arsenal. But when you talk about injuries, look at that. If you're watching on screen, Kyle Walker limping off with what looked like some sort of hamstring injury. Went off after about 30 minutes in the game yesterday. Gareth Southgate was talking about it afterwards. He said, we don't know yet the severity. He's not had many injuries, so he isn't sure whether this is just tightness. I suspect if he's feeling it, it's a little more than that, but we'll know a bit more over the next 24 to 36 hours. Now, you'd think this certainly, whatever happens, is going to rule Kyle Walker out of England's second game during the international break on Tuesday. But with that game against Arsenal just a week away now, you'd have to think it is he is extremely doubtful to be playing for Manchester City in that game against Arsenal. Now, look, City have got a lot of good players, but if you're going to pick a defender who you'd rather than be without for this game against Arsenal, you would want Kyle Walker probably to be out. Um, whether they, he's going to be up against Martinelli, we'll have to wait and see on Martinelli's injury or he's up against Trossard. 
you just don't want Kyle Walker playing. That recovery pace he's got, the ability he's got to get back and frustrate forwards. So, um, yeah, you never want to wish injury on anyone. But for Arsenal, I think they'll still be watching that. Arteta and his coaching staff would have been watching that and seen him limp off and thought, oh, that could, that could be good news for us. So we'll wait and see. Um, as Gareth Southgate said, next sort of 24, 36 hours, I'm sure we'll find out a little bit more about the severity of Walker's injury. Right, moving on to some of your questions and comments now before we wrap this one up today. Guna72 has been in touch. He says, we don't have a huge number of top quality ac academy graduates at the moment. So keeping young Wanyeri at the club and tying down to a decent long-term contract is absolutely crucial. Not only is it important for Ethan's development and career, but it's also important for the academy lads to see that there is a clear pathway to a dream first team place at the Arsenal. Yeah, this was in response to the discussion we had yesterday about Wanyeri, who's about to sign his... Uh, first professional contract at the club and we we're talking about how important it is with a talent like him to sort of prepare for his pathway and not potentially look at bringing in a load of players that are going to block that pathway when you've got someone who you really do believe in and Arsenal do believe in Ethan Manieri it's important that you do sort of plan at least have him sort of factored into your thinking about where the squad is going to go over the next couple of years because you don't want to completely block his pathway into the team um, so yeah, it's uh, it is 100% like you said uh, as well. It's very important for everyone else at Halen to look and continue to see that some players, not everyone, because we know it's very very hard, especially at a club like Arsenal, but that players do continue to be able to sort of make that move from the youth ranks up into the first team. We've seen it a lot with success recently with Saka, Smith Rowe, Eddie, but it sort of started to dry up a little bit since then. So you need to ensure there is a little bit of a sort of continuous. Uh, movement going towards that so it'd be very very important if Ethan does indeed make that Aaron here has got in touch now hi Aaron he says I, I think you might have seen reports in England saying Arsenal are looking at the availability of Nottingham Forest Morgan Gibbs White as a potential replacement for ESR due to Nottingham Forest's breach of PSR and point reduction every time I watched him he has that pace and physical uh, physicality to move the ball forward and some of the uh, few bright prodigies that Nottingham possess Will it be a good fit for the current Arsenal team, whether either flank or in the number eight role? Other than that, due to PSR breaches, will we see some ace players like Anana, Neto and Braithwaite get in moves to bigger clubs um, because the clubs needing to meet their PSR regulations? Uh, I think we will see players having to move. Yes, 100%. I think bigger clubs will take advantage of uh, what's going on with PSR rules at the moment and come down and sign some of these players. And I think Morgan Gibbs white will probably be one of them. I'll be very surprised if he's at Nottingham Forest next season. Done so well there since he's made the move. Everyone questioned the sort of money that Forest paid Wolves to sign him, but it's been a brilliant signing for them. Done so, so well. Looks like a real talent. I'm sure he's going to move to one of the big top clubs in England very, very soon. <laughs> Whether that be Arsenal, I have no idea at this stage, I'm afraid. Um, he's a talent and he does. I'm sure he could fit in at any top clubs. I just... I don't know why, when I think of Gibbs White at the moment, I'm looking at him, I, I kind of feel like, I don't know, Spurs or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, but I like him. I think he'd do well at Arsenal, but I'm not sure. You know, I like Smith Rowe. And I'm thinking if if you're going to be getting rid of Smith Rowe to sign Morgan Gibbs White, I just, I'm not sure I see the point in that. You know, I back Smith Rowe to do what Morgan Gibbs White's doing. So I'd rather just keep Smith Rowe if that's uh, what they're thinking. But I, again, I have no idea if that that's what they're thinking or, or not. So we'll have to wait and see on it. But it's going to be interesting to see what happens to the likes of Gibbs White come the summer, uh, as you say, because of the PSR rules that are kicking into gear. Uh, David says, hi, Charles. Hope you got stuck in at laser tag. I did. It was as chaotic and as loud as I thought it was going to be. Uh, from next season, why? Do, uh, sorry, who do you think is going to be our starting left back, um, Tommy or Timber? Could it possibly be Zinni to get phased in at left eight? Could work nicely and also cover left back when one of them is up the pitch like Xhaka did. Also, an info on the Emirates Cup will be happening in the summer or not due to Euros and overseas tours. I'm not sure on the Emirates Cup yet. To be honest, I'll be totally honest. I haven't even asked a question yet about the Emirates Cup and what's going on in the summer. Um when I do, or if I do, if I hear anything about the Emirates Cup, I will definitely 100% let you guys know. In terms of Arsenal starting left back, I mean, it's a really interesting one. Just because we haven't seen Timber yet because of the injury, and when we have seen him, other players haven't been available. Obviously, he started the season as left back, but whether that was going to be the long term planning for Timber, we just don't know because we were never given the opportunity to find out. Um, I, I, I think it might still be Zinchenko. You know, I know everyone's sort of getting on board that oh, it's time to move Zinni out of the team, but I'm still not convinced by it just because I think Arteta likes him so much that I would still say right now at the, for the start of next season, if everyone's fit, 
I'd still probably say Zinchenko will be Arsenal left back. Um, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see. That's just pure opinion on it. Um, we'll have to wait and see. You know, Timber, is he going to be, is he going to, does, does Arteta see him as a right back or does he see him as a left back? We're, there's just so many question marks over it because we just haven't been able to work it out yet because we haven't seen him enough because of the injury. So right now, I'd still sort of lean towards Zinchenko, but look, we're going to find out during pre season. Um, we'll probably get a much clearer idea on it. But look, it's a nice position to be in, isn't it, for Arteta, where you've got the options of the likes of Timber, Tomiyasu, uh, now Kivior, who's doing so, so well in that position as well, um, and Zinchenko. You know, it's a really nice position to be for a, for a manager. Right, I'm going to end on this one because I knew I knew this was going to generate loads of debate as well. And I, I was almost steered away from it because I just did, I couldn't really be bothered with it. Um, because I knew I was just going to not explain myself well enough and I was going to annoy a lot of people, which clearly I have, <laughs> which is no great surprise. It was on the flag that I was talking about yesterday and how I was trying to just explain my feelings on the whole sort of fury over the flag on the back of the England shirt and saying I just it just didn't really bother me. But in saying that, like everyone's like, oh, it's a disgrace. How can you say something like that? And it's, you know, it's really hard to explain my thinking on it. Um, look, Sue, my chin has got in and says, I'm not particularly minded to be get annoyed by the flag myself, but I completely understand why some are. It is a national identity. If they change the cannon on the Arsenal badge to a sabre or a tiger or whatever, I'm sure you'd have something to say. Same if someone starts calling you Charles Potts, you'd quickly correct them. Um, Terence says, mate, I've enjoyed your videos, but your views on England sh uh, shirt is total bollocks. <laughs> Sorry, lad, but I don't believe you can't understand why people are upset. Very poor, mate. And Golfer 5636 says, love your Charles, but please don't lecture others on what they find important or objectionable. You're perfectly entitled to your lack of concern or anger, but never try and impose your nonplussed opinion on the flag. I'm not trying to impose anything on the flag. That's what I was trying to explain yesterday, and I clearly didn't explain it very well. Like when Terence here says, uh, don't believe why people can't uh, you can't understand why people are upset i can that's what i was trying to say yesterday i can understand it it's just that i'm not overly bothered about it it just it's not something that triggers me that much but i could i can understand kind of why others are and that's what i was trying to say yesterday it's like it's not me feeling the way i do about it and not really being it, it really not winding me up too much it's just how i feel but i can understand and i know that other people will be really annoyed by it. And I can get that because it's just how they feel. And that's what I was trying to say yesterday. You know, I'm not trying to impose anything. I'm not trying to lecture to anyone. I was just answering a question on how I felt about it personally. And that's how I felt about it. Um, and I can, if you if it annoys you so much, you know, if you look at it and it really does trigger you and you feel so passionately about it, that's absolutely fine. It's just how it everyone feels. It's each to their own, isn't it? Um, and that's what I was trying to get get at yesterday when talking about it. But I knew I was going to wind people up. I know I was going to not explain it very well, those sort of subjects. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking about it. So that's it. Anyway, for me today, thank you very much for watching or for listening. Appreciate it as always. We'll be back tomorrow. Like I said, I think tomorrow is about the time that we start turning our attentions towards the Etihad a little bit more and at least start discussing that game in terms of what Mikel Arteta might do. So if you want to get involved in anything from next week onwards in the show, how you would approach the game at the Etihad, who you want to see start, who you think might be better not being in the starting eleven for this game, anything you want to uh, contribute, please do let me know in the comments below. Until then, have a fantastic end of your weekend, everyone. I'll speak to you very soon. Bye-bye.